What if I told you that beneath the city of love and light lies a dark, mysterious underbelly, a labyrinth of bones and secrets? Yes, welcome to the unseen depths of Paris, a world far removed from the glittering Eiffel Tower and the vibrant Champs-Élysées. This is a realm of quiet solitude and eerie beauty, where the past and the present intertwine in a dance as old as time itself. We're talking about the Paris Catacombs, a vast network of subterranean tunnels and rooms that stretch for over 200 miles beneath the bustling metropolis. But this isn't just any old underground maze. This is a place where millions of Parisians found their final resting place, their bones arranged in a macabre display of mortality that both captivates and horrifies in equal measure. But what are the catacombs really? To the uninitiated, they might seem like a morbid curiosity, but in truth, they are a testament to the city's long and fascinating history. They tell a story of overcrowding and disease, of revolution and resilience, of a city that has constantly reinvented itself in the face of adversity. In every nook and cranny, in every skull and femur, there's a tale waiting to be told. Yet, despite their historical significance, the catacombs remain shrouded in mystery. Many sections are off-limits to the public, their secrets protected by a maze of blocked passages and hidden doorways. What lies within these inaccessible depths? Treasure, perhaps, or maybe evidence of secret societies and clandestine meetings? The truth is, we may never fully know, but what we do know is that the catacombs are a fascinating and integral part of Paris's past, present and future. They are a reminder of the city's mortality, a monument to the countless lives that have shaped its history. And they are a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, a symbol of our ability to find beauty and meaning even in the face of death. Before we delve deeper into this subterranean realm, let's journey back to their creation. Our story begins in the late 18th century, with a city on the brink of a crisis. Paris, the city of love and light, was facing a predicament that was far from romantic or illuminating. Its graveyards were bursting at the seams, quite literally. The city's cemeteries were so overcrowded that bodies were often left unburied, leading to a haunting overflow of human remains. This grim situation was further exacerbated by the outbreak of disease, the improper disposal of bodies and the unsanitary conditions of the graveyards made them a breeding ground for illness. The city's population was at risk, and the authorities knew they had to act. The solution they found was as ingenious as it was eerie. They decided to utilize the abandoned limestone quarries that lay beneath the city's streets. These centuries-old quarries, once the source of the stone used to build the city's iconic buildings, were now to become its last resting place. The process was no small undertaking. The quarries had to first be made safe and secure to prevent any catastrophic collapses. This involved extensive engineering work, shoring up the walls and ceilings and creating a network of tunnels and chambers. Next came the relocation of the remains. It was a task of monumental proportions, carried out mostly at night to avoid causing distress to the city's inhabitants. The bones of millions were moved and meticulously arranged in the cavernous depths of the quarries. This was the dawn of the Paris catacombs, a labyrinthine ossuary that stretches for miles beneath the city's bustling streets. A place of darkness and silence, where the city's past and its departed citizens lie in cold, solemn repose. The creation of the catacombs was not simply a practical solution to a pressing problem. It was also a profound reflection of the city's evolving attitudes towards death and the afterlife. It represented a shift from the public, communal nature of death in the Middle Ages to a more private, individualistic view in the modern era. And so, the transformation of Paris's underbelly began. Imagine the monumental task of moving millions of remains from their resting places to a subterranean labyrinth. This was the daunting challenge faced by those tasked with the transformation of the Paris catacombs in the late 18th century. The city's cemeteries were overflowing, and the solution lay deep beneath the bustling streets of Paris. A network of old limestone quarries, largely forgotten by time, was to become the final resting place for countless souls. But this was no simple feat. 
Each body had to be exhumed, transported, and finally laid to rest in the catacombs. This process was carried out under the cover of darkness, in a silent procession of carts laden with the bones of the deceased. Once the remains reached their new home, the task of organization began. It may seem morbid to us now, but the bones were not simply dumped in the catacombs. Instead, they were meticulously arranged in a manner that was both respectful and eerily beautiful. Skulls and femurs were used to create walls and columns, while other bones filled the spaces in between. This was not just a practical solution to a pressing problem, it was a work of art created from the remnants of life. This process of transformation took years to complete. Imagine the eerie silence of the catacombs, broken only by the clink of bone against stone as the walls of the ossuary took shape. Picture the flicker of torchlight casting shadows on the carefully arranged remains. This was a place of death, yes, but also a place of reverence and remembrance. As the last cart made its way from the cemeteries to the catacombs, a new chapter in the history of Paris was beginning. The city had found a solution to its problem, yes, but it had also created something much more. The catacombs were no longer just a network of old quarries, they were a testament to the city's past and a monument to those who had come before. Now, the catacombs were more than just tunnels, they had become a vast ossuary. From their creation until today, the catacombs have seen a variety of uses, some more sinister than others. Picture Paris in the late 18th century, a city in the throes of the French Revolution. The catacombs, then, were more than just a burial ground. They served as a hideout for revolutionaries, a refuge from the tumultuous world above. Its labyrinthine tunnels and chambers offered the perfect cover for clandestine meetings and secret plots. As the centuries rolled on, the catacombs would see a different kind of clandestine activity. During the Second World War, the Parisian underground once again served as a sanctuary, this time for the French resistance. The Nazis had occupied Paris, but they had little knowledge of the complex network beneath their feet. This allowed the resistance to move undetected, to plan, and to counteract the enemy's movements. But not all uses of the catacombs were so noble or dramatic. Throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, they became a popular spot for illegal parties, known as cataphiles. These thrill-seekers would often spend days navigating the tunnels, leaving behind graffiti art and even organizing underground concerts. Yet perhaps the most sinister use of the catacombs was the black market trade of its bones. In the 19th century, a market emerged for the bones of the dead, used in everything from fashion accessories to home decor. This macabre trade was eventually stamped out by the authorities, but not before thousands of bones had been removed and sold. The catacombs have also been used for more legitimate purposes. For instance, they've served as a research site for archaeologists and historians, keen to uncover the secrets of Paris's past. They've even been used for filming locations, providing the perfect eerie backdrop for horror films and thrillers. From revolutionaries to black market bone traders, from secret parties to film sets, the catacombs of Paris have seen it all. They've borne silent witness to the city's history, its triumphs and its tragedies, its secrets and its scandals. The catacombs have indeed been witness to many a secret rendezvous and covert operation. Nowadays, the catacombs serve a different purpose, drawing the curious and the brave from all corners of the world. A labyrinth of tunnels and chambers stretching over 200 miles this vast underground city of the dead has become a macabre magnet for tourists and thrill-seekers. The Paris catacombs today are a stark contrast to their original purpose. No longer a final resting place for the city's dead, they have become an eerie museum, a testament to our fascination with death and history. As you descend the winding staircase, you're greeted by a chilling inscription. Stop! Here lies the empire of death. An apt introduction to the world that lies beneath Paris. Walking through the dimly lit tunnels, you're surrounded by walls of bones stacked meticulously high. The air is cool, the silence deafening. The skulls and bones of over six million people stare back at you, a stark reminder of the city's past. The catacombs are a monument to mortality, a fascinating showcase of our shared human history. 
Yet the catacombs are not just a tourist attraction. They are also a place of study and preservation. Archaeologists and historians continue to explore and document this underground labyrinth, piecing together the stories of those who lie here. Art installations and exhibitions bring a touch of the contemporary to this ancient site, further fueling our fascination with this unusual place. Despite the eerie atmosphere, there's an undeniable allure to the catacombs. The thrill of exploring the unknown, the sense of stepping back in time, the stories etched in every bone. It's a unique experience, a journey into the city's underbelly, where history meets mystery. Today, the Paris catacombs continue to captivate us, drawing us into their dark depths. They serve as a humbling reminder of our mortality, a haunting echo of our past. And so, we continue to descend, drawn by the allure of the unknown, the thrill of the macabre. In the heart of the city of love, beneath the bustling streets, the silent catacombs remind us of our past.